Well, as we take a look at our weather forecast for the week ahead and as we get into the month of February, hard to believe we've already almost uh, finished out uh, the first month of 2025, there is still plenty of drought concern in the U.S. We want to talk about that today. Also get an update on that uh, longer range forecast as we get into the month of February and take a look at South American weather. Joining us now for our weekly weather update eric snodgrass with conduit is with us and eric thanks for being here let's start with how dry it's been i, I know that this is continues to be a concern for many farmers across the u.s here just the lack of soil moisture snowpack etc that we've seen over the last several weeks so far eric well, it's a good thing you bring up snowpack, right? Because what are a lot of people going to remember January being, right? Started off with the major snowstorm that went from Kansas City to the Mid-Atlantic. Then it was followed by the snowstorm that started in like Central Texas, hit Dallas, coated Arkansas, went through Tennessee, Kentucky, and gets over to the Mid-Atlantic. And then we saw the third system, which was the one we talked about last week, which hit, you know, Gulf Coast, the whole run of it and give us a blizzard warning in, in Louisiana. So people are going to think like the thought process is, man, January was it. You look at the stats, there are really only two small spots in the country that are wetter than average. And that's up against the Rocky Mountains, parts of um, Montana and, and, and Wyoming. And by the way, to be wetter than average there just means a little more snow in that area. And then you can find a couple of pockets in the, in the, around the mid South, but listen, the Mississippi River this morning at Memphis, just a couple of feet above low stage. The Mississippi River at St. Louis, two feet below low stage. And the soil moisture across the Northern Plains is in deficit still from fall, uh, the fall 2024 drought. And all those places I told you that were snow, they're south of like, you know, 40 north, right? This is all Southern US stuff. You go to the Northern Plains, the headwaters of the Mississippi and the Missouri, and we don't have we, we're we're at 10 to may, maybe a few places at 50 to 60 percent of their normal snow so the stats i mean the month to date stats there are places in iowa minnesota wisconsin that are currently having their driest uh start to january and i mean january is almost over but our, their mm -hmm. driest january on record but our focus you know a lot of the meteorological focus has been on the, the the problems in southern california which are real i mean don't get me wrong and the drought that's there the drought that's in mexico and I just look at all of it and say, hey, we've seen an active pattern, but no major correction on big time U.S. drought concerns. And that's what just floats around in the back of my mind. And, yeah, it did rain in Southern California this weekend and some snow in their mountains. That may have been more of a problem. We might see some of that emerge today in the news stories. Just understanding that you put down all that rain on top of ground that's just been burned. You, you tend to have a problem. So there you go, Jesse. I, I still think the narrative is on drought going into this new month of February. Well, looking ahead here to February, are we seeing any indication, any sort of pattern shift, any type of precipitation, temperature swings? We're going to get some milder temperatures back in here. What does the at least the early part of February look like right now, Eric? I mean, 50s in Iowa. I mean, it's going to really warm up. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, the, you know, last week we were talking about not just like negative single digits, but like it was a few times minus 10, minus 14 in the Midwest, upper Midwest. I mean, shoot, this morning in Champaign, where I live in Illinois, it was 14 degrees. And we're going to watch a major surge of warm air coming in. And it's about the reorientation of the jet. And where we're going to have to watch first, okay, this low that's over Southern California, it sneaks out. And it develops over Texas. So on Texas, by Wednesday, we're going to be watching for severe storms. That means mild air. If we're going to have severe storms, you got to warm things up. Then very wet conditions, maybe two to three inches of rain are possible from parts of the Red River Valley of the south through Tennessee, Kentucky, through your backyard. All right. Uh, but north of that, I don't see anything. I mean, there may be a little skiff of snow that runs along the northern edge of all of that, that maybe hits Chicago, then gets into the northeast. But you get any farther north of that line. I don't have much in the way of precipitation at all. What we're waiting on is for the jet to reorient itself back to the Northwest, which some models and some of the thought process still, you know, still have me thinking that could verify. So if we start seeing big snows return to the Northwest, then I think February is going to be a very active month. Just how much access to really cold air do we have? Does it come in like these punctuating events 
or is it coming in last for six, seven, eight, nine, ten days? I think it's more of the punctuating cold air from the north than it is going to be the long lasting cold like we saw in the month of February, which is shaping up to be probably a top five coldest February for the continental United States. Oh, excuse me, coldest January for the continental United States on record. So uh, yeah, February, Ohio Valley, Mississippi Valley, Northeast wet, Great Lakes wet, better snows, I hope, for the northern plains. There's some indications of that and better moisture for the Northwest. So where is it not? It's not in West Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Southern California, Mexico, which again is a source region for concern on drought spreading to the North, getting into the 2025 growing season. And I think about this as well, with how deep some of the deficits are for moisture across parts yeah. of the US, I mean, it's gonna take quite a bit of a pattern shift and quite a bit of precipitation to at least catch us up, isn't it, Eric? It is. And, and they've got to remember, how do you break drought in winter? There's only a few places that can break drought in winter. And that's that's the southern half of the United States because the soil moisture, uh, soil temperature, excuse me, can fluctuate and stay above freezing. And mm -hmm. it's in the West Coast. And the problem in the West Coast right now is the moisture that just came through Southern California. That's the first since like last April in some places. And the, you know, the issue is where the heaviest rains are coming, at least in the near term, is south of that. 40th parallel, right? So we've got to get more uh, of the, the moisture farther to the north. And that's where if February doesn't deliver in the northern plains, the central plains, the upper Midwest, then we're going to have a real story come March and April. Let's talk South America. I know we've been watching a lot of dryness concerns in yeah. Argentina, parts of southern Brazil. Harvest has been getting underway in central and northern Brazil, although they've had some rain delays there. So Walk us through the South American picture here as we head into February. What's the latest you're seeing, Eric? Yeah, you know, the, the rain north we, has been well forecast, just very wet, staying wetter, deeper into the season. Uh, and you and I were just chatting before we started recording today. Yeah, there's been all these interesting videos of, of I've seen combines just stuck full of wet grain <laughs> and we've watched them like dumping the grain out into the field in some areas. And it's been an interesting splash in terms of a market, uh, you know, commentary. But the drought issues, if you want to talk about that, they're much farther to the south. Parts of southern Brazil have been dry. And then a big chunk of Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay have been dry. But regional drought needs to be understood. Like, are we really hitting the big Brazilian states or those Argentine provinces with exceptional drought? And you can make a case that some of the driest conditions are not over the most productive ground. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't productive ground that's getting drought. But why are we not getting more of a story out of it? It's got to hit, you know, different areas. And I think that's the issue going forward. What else are you watching around the globe here this week before we close it out? Uh, any other major features you're keeping an eye on right now, Eric? Yeah, I mean, La Nina is at its peak. It's been maintaining it. Um, as soon as it begins to back off, we're going to get something different come spring. And I'm, I'll be honest with you. You know that my risk of central U.S. drought for this spring is about 60%. Uh, which is, of course, above the historical average and above the statistical average. Um, if we can <clears throat> really, if we can really get this La Nina to lose all of its influence, like just not have an influence on the pattern at all, then that helps us out come spring. Watch the Gulf of Alaska temperatures carefully, and there's a very, very large, mild surge running through much of Russia right now. Very, very warm. Uh, and there's question marks as to what that might mean going forward. Is it going to flip hard back? Because if it does, then guess where all the cold air goes? It goes there, not on our side of, of the Northern Hemisphere. So, yeah, many things to play as usual. Um, and uh, But to be honest with you, Jesse, it's where we started today that's most important to me. And that is just understanding, did winter give us a drought story that can't be ignored come spring? And that's what we'll keep talking about. Absolutely. Well, I know folks can stay up to date with a lot of the latest weather trends and forecasts and more you got a great website that folks can go check out right eric yeah agweather.com ag-dx.com and listen i'm pretty pumped about this website <clears throat> we're going through another redesign right now to make it better and easier for folks to use i actually have a designer that's going to help i'm pretty pumped about that uh because <laughs> everything else on there i built and it's just what i built and also i finally have gained regained access to some of the uh european data that i've uh, wanted to have access to for a while now they've started pumping the data back to us so uh and uh, i'm thankful they gave me a discount on it this time so but you can see it all there for free 
Um, and I appreciate uh, you letting me plug that website, ag-wx.com. It's a, it's a great uh, resource for sure. AG-WX.com for more. Eric Stongrass with Conduit. Always good to chat with you, my friend. And uh, we'll see you in person next week at the Ag Market yeah. Conference in Nashville. So looking forward That's to seeing right. you, my friend. Me too. It's going to be good. I, I can't wait to get down there. Yeah, they're going to have a great lineup, and uh, Eric's going to be part of it. And with that, we will chat in person next week. Eric, thanks so much. Appreciate it. You bet.